Okay, in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a silver spoon and how to light it and how to use a HDR angular map to create the reflections you see here in this final rendered version. Now, the soundtrack for this video has to be re-recorded because the original recording is messed up. So sometimes you hear some uh, silence in this uh, video. So uh, just bear with me for this video. Okay, so right now what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I've switched over to the uh, shaded mode so you can see the uh, actual spoon itself. Alright, so I, right now I'm uh, resetting the scene and I'm, as usual, I'm going to delete away the default cube. And uh, the base object that you want to start off with is just simply a UV sphere. So what I did was I press Shift A and create a UV sphere and under the tool setting, give it a ring segment of 32. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is uh, I'll switch over to the uh, side view by pressing number pad 3 and then pressing 5 to go to orthographic view then pressing Z to go to wireframe view shift tab and then select the uh, face option and then what I'm doing here is I'm uh, pressing B to box select left mouse click and drag down to select about two-thirds from the top to bottom and I just need to select one more and then uh, one more loop so I press control number pad plus to increase the selection followed by X to delete away the top part of the sphere so the end result is I end up with a shape looking sort of like a contact lens shape this is essentially just part of the sphere so the next thing I want to do is uh, just to select everything in edit mode. So I press tab to go to edit mode, press A to select everything, and then scale it along the Z axis. Okay, so I press S followed by Z, then I just uh, left mouse click, or rather just uh, move the cursor, S, Z, move the cursor uh, to scale it down the Z axis. So now it's got a much uh, flatter shape. While at the same time you can see that the the mesh object is not uh, shaded smooth so uh, you can actually smooth it now at this stage but um, right now what I'm doing is that I'm moving the uh, components in edit mode until it's lined up along the green line there which is the green axis which also acts as the uh, the floor plane line for me okay right now what I'm doing is I'm switching on to the top view by pressing number pad 7 and then press Control tab switch over to the uh, vertex selection mode and then I'm going to activate the proportional editing tool so I turn it on by enab enabling it you can also turn it on by pressing the O key and then I'm using the default fall off and I'm going to right mouse click and select this vertex here and then clicking on the uh, move manipulator in the Y axis I just left mouse click and drag to pull it down and you see the white circular line, that is the area of influence. And to increase the area of influence, you can actually roll your middle mouse roller up, okay, to increase or reduce the size of the influence. So what you want to do is that you want to left mouse click and roll your mouse up to increase the influence and then pull it down at the same time until you get this egg-like shape outline. Okay, so now I'm uh, switching over to shaded mode to just show uh, everybody what it looks like. And you can see the, the base shape of the spoon is start, starting to take shape uh, very, very quickly. And the next thing I did was in the object mode, I in the tools uh, column, I turned on smooth shading. Okay, so uh, for me, oh, in order to make the spoon look more realistic, what I did was, uh, okay, right now I'm just splitting the viewports into two. So I can show you all what I'm doing. So I, I move the cursor down and then just right mouse click, split the uh, viewport to two. And uh, I'm going to close one of the tools uh, column in the right window viewport. And I right mouse click to select, now I'm in edit mode, right mouse click to select the uh, center vertex here. And also the proportional editing is still on. So uh, using the default fall off, I'm reducing the amount of influence and I'm just moving the uh, you can, as you can see, as I move, I'm also adjusting the area of influence. I'm pushing the center portion of the spoon right down to the back to the center again. Okay, so you can skip this step. Okay, it's not uh, necessary, but uh, for me, I'm just a little bit nitpicky here, just to make my spoon look perfect. So I'm just 
grabbing that center portion and then just shifting it back so I sort of have a uh, semicircular shape uh, at the base there okay so now the next step is I want to uh, give the spoon some thickness because you, as you can see right now the uh, shape is uh, very very thin so there are actually about uh, three ways which you can increase the thickness now the easiest way will be to select all the components by pressing A and pressing E to extrude but it gives a thickness that is very uh, weird and not very uniform so another way would be to use the solidify by pressing Control F and then choosing the solidify option and then just uh, dragging the thickness of the solidify parameters in the tools column to get the thickness that is the uh, second method and another method would be okay so now right now I just undo uh, will be just to press E to extrude then right mouse click so that the extruded faces snap back to its original location and then here I made a mistake because my uh, uh, my proportional editing tool is still on so I need to turn it off okay so by going down to the tools there and turn it off and then uh, while my faces are still selected I press the command alt s to uh, engage the shrink flatten tool and essentially it is about the same as the solidify tool so uh, I just manually move the cursor up so it has a much more consistent uh, thickness look to it and uh, I'm going to the side view here okay the right orthographic view and then I'm just going to very little rotate uh, by pressing R okay and then rotate about uh, anti-clockwise just a little bit okay the reason is to give it the front part a, a thinner lip okay and I want the rear to be slightly thicker than the front okay so right now I switch over to the uh, object mode and I think I don't really need the extra viewport anymore and mm, I think later in the video I'll be closing this viewport oh yeah what, what I did right now is I press control 1 uh, control uh, 1 in the top row numbers to uh, add a sub surf modifier of level 1 and uh, so now the base shape of the spoon looks uh, much smoother and nicer okay and the next thing I want to do is to uh, select the four faces here at the back okay of the spoon okay so these faces are resulted from the uh, extrusion to give the thickness and I don't need the other window anymore so I just click on the hash lines drag across to the right left mouse click and drag to the right to close it okay now with these four faces selected uh, what I did is I switch over to the right view by pressing number pad 3 then holding down to my control key I'm going to like left mouse click extrude okay holding down the control key left mouse click and extrude one small section here and then uh, I'm gonna move it out a little bit more and then holding down click uh, control and then left mouse click to extrude several more segments and uh, to create the handle and the neck of the spoon okay so I just extruded another tiny section at the back and if you can't extrude okay because of the manipulator blocking your view you can turn the manipulator off in the tools header right below there by clicking on that three colored uh, three color icon uh, below there so now I've uh, middle mouse click and drag to switch over to the uh, orthographic view perspective view and you can see the handles are a little bit thick so what I did was I switch over to edge selection mode control tab select edge uh, and then holding down to alt right mouse click along this line uh, this edge here and then you can turn the manipulator back on again by clicking on the icon then clicking on the scale manipulator to scale it along the y the x-axis rather or if not you can always use uh, the shortcut by pressing s followed by x okay which sometimes is much faster so it pays to uh, remember the shortcut keys okay but if some of you are not used to it you can always use the manipula manipulator right so I'm gradually tapering down the handle of the spoon and here I'm just doing some uh, modeling adjustments okay selecting the uh, faces here okay holding down shift right mouse click to deselect okay and then just scaling down here and uh, I just want to move these uh, edges up give it some thickness towards the end okay 
So actually you can carry on continuing spending uh, minutes, okay, a few more hours to just adjust it. But I realized right now because there's not sufficient subdivisions along the handle here, so the uh, smooth uh, result still looks uh, a bit linear. So I am I'm adding a couple more edge loops in between these edge loops here and then just move the, moving them up slightly to give my uh, spoon handle a nice curve. And essentially the spoon is done. But uh, right at the neck area there, there's still insufficient uh, subdivisions. So I'm going to insert a couple more edge loops by pressing Ctrl R and then just sliding them down slightly. And as you can see, after inserting those edge loops, the neck looks much nicer, much better. Okay, okay so essentially the spoon is done. You can carry on tweaking the spoon uh, uh, if you wish to make it look nicer. And if you render it, it looks reasonably okay. But the spoon itself uh, doesn't look that interesting because there is no uh, tabletop to display it. Uh, there's no reflection on the spoon. There's no material being applied to it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to create a plane surface and going to edit mode. After I press Shift A and then create plane, I'm going to press Tab to go to edit mode, then press S to scale it up until it fills up the entire grid area. And then I'm going to press Tab again to uh, get out of the edit mode. And I believe the next part of my uh, tutorial, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rotate the spoon. Right, right now I I selected the spoon and I go to the the side view and then I press R to rotate it until uh, the tip of the handle and the uh, the bottom of the spoon itself is aligned to the green line so it looks to give it the uh, look of the spoon resting on a flat tabletop okay so right now I'm just adjusting the position of the spoon so that it uh, looks nicer uh, in front of the camera okay and then I just do a test render and you can see right now the shadows are very very harsh okay because we only have one single light source which is the uh, point light okay the point lamp right over here and uh, in order to to uh, reduce the harshness of the shadow I duplicated another light by pressing shift D and then moving it right behind the spoon area and I'm changing this light instead of a point light I'm going to change it into a hemi light. Now the hemi light doesn't generate any shadows and it's so something like a soft fill light okay that uh, generates a directional light. So right now the, the directional light is pointing the wrong direction. So it, while in the top view I just press R to rotate it until the line is pointing towards the spoon and you can actually switch over to the right view and then carry on rotating it until it points at the better direction. In fact right now I'm switching between the right and front view and rotating the lights until the line is pointing directly at the spoon. And because the energy of this light is very strong I reduced it uh, quite a lot and then I give it a slight warm yellowish color and then now I just do another test render by pressing F12 and you can see the the shadows of the point light is not so harsh anymore and in fact it's starting to look much better. Okay, but the shadows here still looked uh, a bit harsh, okay, or a bit hard. So I selected the point light, increased the samples, okay, the sampling, and then increased the soft size. And then uh, this one will actually slow down your computer if your computer is not fast in the rendering. So right now you can see the shadows are much softer. It looks much nicer. Okay, so what is missing right now is uh, we we've got our lighting uh, done, uh, but we are missing the material. So I'm going to show you a website. Okay, the materials uh, repository. All right, I'm listing out all the links below this uh, YouTube video here, so you can uh, click on the links to download the materials to try this out yourself. So download the material and uh, then save it uh, at your uh, file location there, because we're going to append the materials into uh, Blender later on. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just searching for the chrome material which I'm going to use for the spoon itself. And the material I use is the chrome miniard, okay, blind material which gives a brilliant reflection, uh, almost like silver. Okay, and then the next uh, image that you need to download to create the reflections is a HDR angular map or a light probe map. Okay, uh, which you can download from the ictdbvec.org site. Again, that link is uh, below this YouTube video. You can click on it uh, to download the HDR map. Okay, so first, what I did was to uh, 
bring in the material. So right now there's no materials in this uh, scene file. So I go to click on File, Append, and then I navigate to the folder containing the, the material blend file which you've downloaded. Double click on the blend file and go to the material uh, folder category and then double click on the velvet material to bring in uh, that material. Then select the floor plane and click on the material tab there and click on this material uh, browser and then you can click on the velvet material. Now the zero next to velvet means that nothing is using it yet. But once you click on it, okay, the uh, floor plane material, uh, floor plane object is assigned with the velvet material. So now, now I'm bringing in the uh, chrome material. So again, click on file, append, and then click on the uh, the blend file containing the material. Navigate to the material folder, double click on the material itself, and repeat the same step. Select the spoon first. Right mouse click to select the spoon, and then click on the materials uh, tab and then click on the chrome material. So now the spoon is assigned to chrome material. So let's just render it and take a look at it. And you can see uh, it doesn't look very interesting because right now the world is actually a gray material and the spoon is reflecting the gray and a little bit of the velvet material. So if you want the spoon to have a nicer uh, reflections, you have to bring in a HDR uh, reflection map. So I start by clicking on the world, then activate the real sky, and then click on the texture tab to bring in the image. So click on new texture and change the category into image or movie and then open the HDR map. So I already downloaded it on my documents folder. So double click on it to load it. And then I'm going to activate several settings. Okay, you can see that light probe image is loaded. And uh, then I can click on this icon to pack this image with this blend file so that if you want to send this blend file to a friend when he opens it up this image will be included with the blend file so just by clicking on that icon there so this one the uh, I'm gonna turn off the blend and uh, uh, under the influence turn on horizon so that you can have the image fill up the en entire horizon and I'm clicking back to the world and then just to check what the uh, reflection looks like apparently the mapping right now is wrong so I made a, a mistake there, so I'm going back to the uh, textures and under the mapping, the textures, okay, under the mapping, instead of the view, you have to change it into angular, all right, because this is the angular map. Okay, so once, you once you've done that, uh, it takes that spherical light pro image, it basically unwraps it, flattens it and wraps it around the entire world. So once you've done that process and if you press F12 to render, you should have a much nicer looking reflection uh, appearing on the spoon. And by default, Blender always renders about 50% of the maximum size that you set. So in the HD setting, so I'm just increasing the uh, HD render to 100%. So now I render and then this is the uh, result of the render. So essentially, that's how you model a spoon, uh, light up and set the materials uh, uh, for this uh, tutorial. So um, I hope you can give it a try and thanks for watching.